Hi folks, good morning. Some of you must have heard the news that uh, Russia has uh, increased the production of uh, Su-57 fighters. They produced one in 2020, three in 2021, six in 2022, 12 in 2023, and believe it or not, they're going to produce 24 in 2024. Now that's an incredible ramp up. They are doubling production every year for three consecutive years. Besides ramping up production of the Su-57, the Russians have started production of a new variant of the Su-57 with the Stage 2 AL-51 engine. The AL-51 engine has a dry thrust of 11 kN and a wet thrust of 17 kN. In comparison, the predecessor AL-41F engine had a dry thrust of 9 kN and a wet thrust of 14.5 kN. So there is a substantial increase in the thrust of the aircraft and as a result the aircraft can now super cruise at between 1.5 to 1.6 uh, mark. Now that's a uh, substantial increase in operational capability. It will reduce the time of uh, time the aircraft takes to arrive uh, at a point where there is a threat or an engagement uh, planned. Coming back to the production ramp up. Russia already has 24 Su-57s in its inventory. By the end of 2024, it will have 48. And by the end of 2025, it will have 72. What that means is, as soon as the war ends, Russia will have either surplus production capacity or a surplus, uh, or very soon end up with a surplus inventory. One way out would be to cut production. The other better way out would be to put up the aircraft for export. So uh, Russia could have a lot of aircraft for available for export within two to three years. Marketability of the aircraft will increase due to lowered production cost and the operational track record of the aircraft in the special military operation. Many defense enthusiasts are inclined to dismiss the stealth capabilities of the Su-57. Some go to the extent of stating that it's not a fifth generation aircraft. Well, it has it has super cruise now, and the only attribute of a fifth generation aircraft that you could conceivably question is this are the stealth characteristics of the aircraft. Now let me explain this. The Su-57 is designed to prevent U.S. stealth fighters from intruding into Russian airspace. They are designed for good front aspect stealth because any aircraft intruding into Russian airspace would be seen from, would be seeing the Su's front aspect. As far as front aspect stealth is concerned, the Su-57 is as good as the F-22 Raptor or the F-35 Lightning. Its side aspect and rear aspect stealth characteristics are not that good. Now side aspect and rear aspect stealth characteristics, good stealth characteristics are required if you have to go into contested airspace, maneuver, turn, attack and then aggress. The Su-57 is not designed to do that. The Su-57 is designed to either go up to the battlefront and release its own stealth weapons. So instead of relying on its own stealth characteristic, the Su-57 has carries missiles, long-range missiles, that are very difficult to intercept, either because they are very fast, hypersonic, or they have very good stealth characteristics. Examples being 
the KH101, which is which has good uh, stealth characteristics. It also has uh, a self-protection suit to protect itself from missile and uh, gunfire attacks. So, for the purpose that it is designed, the Su-57 is very good. A question that comes to mind is, could India benefit from the production ramp up and the rapid improvement and the operational experience that has now gone into the Su-57? It's a very difficult question to answer. And I would uh, let the listener or the viewer answer the question uh, for himself or herself. The fact is, India's AMCA isn't going to be deployable operationally before 2040. And I'll add to that, if at all. I have my reservations. But that's another subject. So we do need an interim stealth fighter. So what do we need an interim stealth fighter for? Well, for one, to stop Chinese J-20 aircraft or the J-35 aircraft from intruding into our airspace. They are all aspect, uh, the J-20 is, uh, has got better stealth characteristics. Uh, it's got good uh, stealth characteristics. It's got front aspect stealth as well as side aspect stealth. What it lacks currently is rear aspect stealth. The J-35 on the other hand is uh, also similar, but uh, less stealthy. So it has uh, front aspect and side aspect stealth, but not uh, rear aspect stealth. So they could uh, ingress into Indian airspace and attack uh, valuable uh, vital targets uh, to erode uh, Indian air defense systems for uh, example. India's requirement for a interim stealth fighter has been mentioned in the press and discussed in the press. A lot of people are advocating that India acquire the F-35 from the US. Well, good luck with that. For one, I don't think the Air Force would be too enthused getting a a US fighter into the Indian inventory. It'll be too intrusive. The US would want just about every valuable secret that the Air Force, the Indian Air Force holds. The US would want to be privy to that. In simple words. Besides that, there is the question of sanctions. We have been subject to US sanctions as late as the early 2000s. We are still subject to US sanctions. We are not, we are not uh, able to act in our interests. We try to, we succeed, but we don't have complete uh, freedom. And finally, the pound of flesh that Shylock Sam will extract from us for giving the F-35 to the Indian Air Force would include doing away with the S-400 systems. Think about that.